Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to this talk which is entitled Deep Learning Algorithms Outperform Veterinary Pathologists in Detecting the Mitotically Most Active Tumor Region. I'm Marco Preville, I'm from Technische Hochschule Ingolstadt and this work was done at FAU in close collaboration with our clinical partners at Freie Universität Berlin and also at VetSwiss and IDEX. Now before we start, let me quickly introduce to you what this is all about. If the malignancy of a tumor is to be investigated, the gold standard for this is histopathology, that is taking a thin slice of tissue, staining it and investigating it under the microscope. Tumor tissue consists of a large number of cells, but some of them are of particular interest. When the tissue was prepared and thus all cellular processes halted, some of the cells were just undergoing cell division. We call these cells mitotic figures. It is well known that the rate at which mitotic figures are present is related to tumor growth and thereby tumor malignancy. This explains why the count of mitotic figures per area is also a decisive factor in many grading schemes. What you've learned up to now is what mitosis is and that it needs to be counted. I didn't tell you where it needs to be counted though. Many grading schemes require the pathologists to count wherever there's the most mitotic figures. Now that's kind of hard to estimate. Now if we see in this image, there's three mitotic figures, one, two, and three. Now if we zoom out of this image, you can hopefully agree with me that at the moment it's not possible to distinguish mitotic figures from other cells anymore. Okay, let's leave them on those annotations and zoom out and zoom out. Now, maybe the region where there's the most mitotic figures would have been rather here. But that's impossible to tell without those annotations. You might ask yourself now, so where do these annotations come from in the first place? It's easy. They come from a data set. So these images are part of a data set that we published around about a year ago um, as open data. Thus, we're now able to investigate the mitotic count or the density of mitotic figures on the complete microscopy slide. And if we do that, we see that it's actually kind of patchy. So that means that the region of interest selection is in fact very relevant. Now, I'm sure you have realized that this task is like almost impossible for a human to do. Yet, it is part of routine diagnosis. So that kind of equipped us with two main research questions. First of all, since mitotic count is notorious for having a high interrater variability, maybe that interrater variability comes from the region of interest selection. So the first question would then be, how good can humans estimate this region of interest where the highest mitotic count is to be found? And secondly, as this involves basically looking at each and every image patch, maybe can a machine learning solution do better in this? Since this paper is all about area selection, let us now finally also define the area that we're talking about. The area that will be counted within is, in most schemes, equal to 10 so-called high power fields. One high power field is the area that the pathologist sees at 400 times magnification. Unfortunately, this area varies quite a bit with the optical parameters of the microscope. We've settled for the definition of Meuten and define the area to be 2.37 square millimeters. So knowing this area now, we can derive a map of all possible mitotic counts that can be calculated from a microscopy slide. Using a window with the size offset 2.37 square millimeters, we can move over the image and count all mitosis within. This is how we come to the mitotic count map here on the right hand side. And the task now becomes to find the center of the area that has the highest mitotic count. For each slide, we can now also have a look at the distribution of the mitotic count, here displayed as a box plot, indicating the first and third quartile and the minimum and maximum. Given a position that an expert selected, we can now look up in the map on the right hand side how good or bad the expert was. Let me now tell you who participated in our study. We had five board certified veterinary pathologists and three veterinary pathologists in training. 
The question of how to deal with mitosis as a pattern recognition task is actually not that easy to answer. First of all, you could say it's clearly an object detection task, since we want to detect mitosis, which are objects. Well, secondly, you could also say, no, it's, it's actually a segmentation task, because we want to segment the area of those cells from the complete patch, and then we also know like what percentage there is. Well, thirdly, you could also say it's a regression task. We want to regress the number of mitosis from an image patch. So we didn't make the decision at all and just evaluated all three possible tasks. Our object detection task was based on a RetinaNet architecture with a ResNet18 stem, followed by a secondary classification stage that takes centered image crops and yields a class assignment, mitosis or non-mitosis. In our initial experiments, we found that a ResNet18 stem is sufficient for both of these networks. Second, considering the task a segmentation task, we tried out a standard unit. And third, we came up with an architecture based on ResN50 that makes mitosis classification a regression task. Let's look at this now. While this model was only the second best in performing the mitotic count, it has the advantage that it requires less specific training information in that only the number of mitosis in the image needs to be known. Having a look at the activations and using the same convolutional layer for class mapping, we can also use it for weekly supervised localization of mitosis, as shown here. Alright, now let's come to the results. We split up our 32 cases into those that were clearly low grade, as defined by having a mitotic count that cannot exceed the value as 7 as defined in the grading scheme of QPL. Then we have the borderline cases here in the center that could be above threshold or below, depending on the area that was selected either by the model or by the expert. And finally, we have the clearly high-grade cases where the 25th percentile of the mitotic count distribution was already above the threshold. The red symbols here indicate the board certified experts, the blue ones the pathologists in training, and the cyan colored ones represent the models. If we have a look at the cases 12 and 14, we see that the maximum mitotic rate, which was above the threshold of the grading scheme, here indicated as a red dotted line, was spotted by two models, but not a single human expert. Also, in the vast majority of other cases, we can see that the models always score top position, with the second stage object detection model scoring best. This can also be seen in this plot. On the left-hand side, we show the percentage of the area selected by a participant having a mitotic count in the upper 50% of the distribution. And on the right-hand side, we show the same for the upper 25% of the distribution. In each case, the models outperformed the pathologists and the two-stage object detection model was the best. So in summary, we can say that our expectations were met in that it's a really challenging task for humans. And on the other hand, we can also see that it's a task that can be well solved by machine learning. Thanks for watching. Oh, and I just realized that I have some time left. So um, in case you're interested in that cool tool that I was using in the beginning, you know, the one with the zooming in and zooming out of the slide, that tool is called Exact. It's open source. It's from Christian Marzal. It's an awesome tool. Um, check it out.